Hello students, I am Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I wish you a very warm welcome to this session of Zoology Lecture. The topic of our discussion today is secondary sex organs of male. In our previous lectures, we have discussed about the histology of testes, sperm production and the endocrine regulation of spermatogenesis. Now, we will discuss that what is the role of the secondary sex organs. As you can see, the secondary sex organs of the male are epididymis, vas deferens, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, corpus glands and the male copulatory organ penis. Secondary sex organs are not directly involved in the process of gamete production. These are responsible for storage of gametes, maturation of gametes and transportation of gametes or we can see that these assist in reproduction in some way. So, their function is not gamete production. What is their function? These are involved in storage, maturation or transportation of gametes or in simple terms we can say that they assist in reproduction in some way. Let us first talk about epididymis. As you can see in this diagram, epididymis is nearly 8 to 12 meters long highly convoluted tubule attached to testes. Testes plus epididymis that is testes along with this epididymis is what is testicle. So, when we use the term testicle that refers to testes along with the epididymis. So, it is a highly convoluted tubule attached to the testes. It is differentiated into three regions as you can see caput epididymis the head region, corpus epididymis the body region, corda epididymis the tail region. Sperms are continuously produced in the testes. Now, these spermatozoa, they are transported to the epididymis where they will be stored. Please remember, testicular sperms are immature and immotile. These do not have the ability to fertilize zoa. If you directly take out sperms from the testes, there is a technique called testicular sperm extraction TSE. All right. TSC is testicular sperm extraction. So, if you take out sperms directly from the testes and keep them in a nutrient medium along with the ova, they are not capable of fertilizing the ova because testicular sperms are immature. Testicular sperms are immature and immotile. These do not have the ability to fertilize zoa. Now, if the sperms they are immotile, how they are able to reach the epididymis? It is because of the fluid movement. The fluid which is produced by the seminiferous tubules, that fluid pushes the sperms forwards plus vasa efferentia. Peristalsis occurs in vasa efferentia and vasa efferentia are the small ducts which connect the reti testes with the head of the epididymis. So, those peristaltic movements they push the sperms towards the epididymis. Once they reach the epididymis, it is the site for the temporary storage of the sperms, site for the maturation of the sperms. So, we can say that epididymis is the site where the sperms acquire maturity and motility. So, sperms acquire maturity and motility in epididymis. Though they acquire motility in epididymis, yet these do not move on their own. They are propelled by fluid movement only. Sperms, they move on their own once they are ejaculated. Once they are released from the male body, then the sperms, they start moving on their own. Till the time they are inside the male reproductive tract, they do not move on their own. Sperms take nearly 12 days to cross this epididymis and they remain stored in the coda epididymis for even more than one month. 
but once the sperms are ejaculated in the female reproductive tract, there the sperms, they can survive only for 72 hours, that is 3 days. Once ejaculated in the female reproductive tract, the survival time is 3 days and out of those 3 days or out of those 72 hours, the fertilizing ability is best for the first 48 hours, right. Inside the epididymis, they can survive for more than 1 month also. Sperms, they continuously undergo phagocytosis. Sperms, they continuously undergo phagocytosis in the epididymis. So, we can say that epididymis is the recycling center for the sperms. Epididymis is the recycling center. In what sense? That sperms, once they die in the epididymis, they undergo phagocytosis, right? So, what all functions we have seen for epididymis? It is the site for temporary storage of sperms. It is the site where the sperms acquire motility. It is the site where the sperms, they acquire maturity. From coda epididymis, as you can see in this diagram, this long tubule, it arises or this duct which is called vas deferens or it is also called ductus deferens. So, we can say that vas deferens is a long muscular tube which arises from coda epididymis and moves up towards the abdomen. It crosses the urinary bladder and then it receives another duct from seminal vesicles to form the ejaculatory duct. I will show you in the diagram, we just draw small rough diagram for this. <coughs> See, say this is the urinary bladder, right? Urinary bladder, it is the reservoir for urine. These are the ureters which carry urine from kidneys. So, these are the two ureters. I said that this duct, vast difference, <coughs> it moves up towards the abdomen, it crosses the urinary bladder like this and then it dilates to form ampulla. Ampulla is the swollen part of the vast difference which stores sperms. So, this vast difference, it slightly dilates to form the ampulla region, right. So, this duct is what? Vas deferens. As I said, vas deferens is a long muscular tube which moves up towards the abdomen, crosses the urinary bladder and it receives another duct from seminal vesicles to form ejaculatory duct. So, we can show seminal vesicles like this. Right. And this is the ejaculatory duct. At the base of the bladder, here we have the prostate gland, right. So, actually these seminal vesicles are behind the urinary bladder. We are showing it from the front view. So, these seminal vesicles, they are joining with the ampulla and they form a duct that is called ejaculatory duct, which enters into the prostate gland and it joins urethra. This duct is what? It is urethra. Urethra is the common duct for carrying urine as well as semen. This structure is urinary bladder. Now, because urethra carries urine as well as semen, that is why it is also called urinogenital duct. And what is this structure? It is seminal vesicle. These are the accessory sex glands these contribute nearly 70 percent to the total volume of the semen. Let us come back to the vas deferens. Vas deferens or the ductus deferens, it is the secondary storehouse for the sperms. Please remember, vas deferens is the secondary storehouse for sperms. It also stores sperms. 
and sperms undergo phagocytosis and vast difference also. There is a clinical procedure called vasectomy or the male sterilization in which both the vas difference they are cut and ligated. After vasectomy the sperm production continues in the testes but the sperms they undergo phagocytosis in the epidermis. So the semen which is ejaculated is without sperms. So vasectomy does not stop the sperm production. Sperm production continues but the ejaculated semen is without the sperms because that connection the vas difference between the testes and the urethra that has been cut. So that was about epididymis and vas difference. Let us quickly see what are the functions of epididymis. It is the temporary storehouse for the sperms. Vas difference is also a storehouse for sperms. It is called the secondary storehouse. Epididymis is the primary storehouse for sperms. Epididymis is the site for maturation of the sperms. Epididymis is the site where the sperms they acquire motility also, but they do not move. Sperms will move on their own once they are ejaculated from the male body. So that was about epididymis and vas difference. In our next lecture, we will discuss the function of the accessory sex glands and the composition of the seminal fluid.